One of my Patreon supporters, John Doe, has asked me, good name that, by the way, good name, has asked me, hey, can you help me out? I'm trying to fit some shoes from Genesis 3 that were made for Genesis 3 onto a Genesis 8 figure, and they don't look great. They all look very crumpled on the bottom, and, you know, I wish the creator would make a Genesis 8 version of it so I can avoid the auto-fitting thing that sometimes happens with shoes, and actually pretty much always happens with shoes. Um, is there another way? Is there anything I can do? about it and the short answer is yes the long answer is it's actually fairly tricky but not too tricky so you can you can make it work it's a little bit convoluted and you have to kind of think like a content creator for this and i thought i'll show you these steps in what you need to do in order you know to to make that work Let's have a look at the problem first. So I have some shoes here that I'll just bring in uh, that are made for this here, for the first date outfit. Those are the only ones I could find in my library that manifest this issue. So I'll go and load up a Genesis 3 figure with these shoes and then I'll load up a Genesis 8 figure with the auto-fitted shoes. Then we'll have a look at the differences. So let's go with Genesis 3 first. I'm going to use my stream safe text just for this because they're safe to use on Twitch and YouTube. It absolutely, yes, I totally, I totally agree, Rod. Every day. And you know, once you've got, once you think you, you got one step further, then there's, there's something else that, that you need to learn, which is kind of crazy. Like Julia, for example, right now is, um, is looking into Plant Factory, which is a wonderful application. It's a very, very cool application. So we go put that here and then we put, uh, Genesis 8 version in the middle and we'll just have a quick look at the at the pros and cons of auto fitting shoes and also how to fix it that's the idea there we go so they're both in their original position that's kind of nice let's go fit the shoes onto Genesis 3 first and they're in wardrobe so I'm using the first date outfit just the boots so these are boots usually this happens on high heeled shoes as well there we go boots there are right They look nice, they look neat, we like them, we like them a lot. Now I'll go and switch over to my Genesis 8 figure and fit the same boots on which I'm of course being told, hey, what is this item? Never seen it before, what are you going to do with it? It was made for Genesis 3 female and under the template I can just say nothing because you know that's that's okay, let that studio work out what's cool. Um, give it a moment for these artifacts to disappear. And they do disappear to a certain extent, but really not, not completely. So, um, hello, there we go. So they look okay, but if you look closer, you see that some of those weight maps are just, uh, they're just kind of bending in and out the the bottom here so they don't look flat on the bottom they look very they look very bent uh, the heel it's another thing the heel is kind of you know sticking out but that's because the as far as i know Dash studio is trying to fit this item around the base shape and it's trying to project weight maps and it's basically thinking that the shoe is made of a soft material that needs to be wrapped around the figure we know that's not the case but Dash studio doesn't quite know that so the original item i can see looks actually fairly uh, fairly fairly good but uh, not so the auto converted version so there's there's essentially two ways to get around it one is to fix what auto fitting did and that's what i'm going to show you that's the quicker way or you can also go and export these boots uh post so that they fit genesis 8 so basically just uh, um, put them on genesis 3 and then uh turn Genesis 3 into a Genesis 8 position by spreading the legs ever so slightly, then exporting that as an OBJ, importing that in again and treating it as a brand new item for that a clothing creator would use and then start again from scratch. So use the transfer utility, then fix the weight maps from scratch. That takes much longer. And there's a nice video by Alan Renfeld who works for DAS. He explains how to rig high heeled shoes. So that might come in handy. I will link to that video in the description. For now, we're going to go and have a look at how we can fix whatever is happening here and why it's happening. So the reason why is weight maps. So if I go and select my boots here, 
And I'm hoping actually that, can we see this all right? Should I maybe make it a bit lighter here? There, that's a bit lighter. So we select our shoes here, our boots. These are FD Boots 2, that's what they're called. And for this to get fixed, I need to go and choose my weight brush node tool. So the node weight brush tool, I've got it here. It's also available under tools node weight map brush so use that and then open yourself the tool settings tab we need to have that so that we can uh, that we can select the correct weight map in a moment there so right now i've got my uh, maybe also i'm going to change this from filament i'm going to change this into uh, wire shaded just so that we can see the geometry a little bit better and that also lets us see what's actually broken here so if you look at the soles now this is not straight this is kind of all broken but if you look at that on the genesis 3 version you see it's fairly straight so zoom in on one shoe thankfully we can use symmetry here in a moment and uh, bring up the weight map so uh, first of all you can have a look at where these distortions happen on which part of the foot they happen so open up your boots and have a look through this under hip this is the whole rigging there there's pelvis and then you have the left thigh and you've got the left thigh twist and you've got the um, left shin and you have the left foot and then you have the metastarsals and then you have the toes and so forth so the metastarsals i think are the ones with the with the biggest issue so if you select those and then come over here into the tool settings tab and select the general weights you will see that your your color is changing in the viewport and this is now the influence of the weight map over the current joint so red means that it has a high influence blue means it has a lesser influence gray means it doesn't have an influence at all and there's you know colors in between but important to remember it's all the same weight map so you only have one map it's not like on joint rotations where you have one map per rotational joint you have one weight map overall and if you go and select different parts you can see what this group influences on here so let's let's do this so you can you can go and paint no matter if they have an influence or not but uh, what we do is first of all make sure we apply whatever we do to both sides so we don't have to do it twice and that's done with symmetry so that's over here again under tool settings uh, use symmetry and we're using the x symmetry so whatever's happening on the right will happen on the left and vice versa that's kind of cool then when you zoom in if you do nothing with your cursor you can go and add weight to these places to both places and you can see how that deforms the shoe that's what happens with left click and drag i don't want to really want to do that so i'm going to go and control z that and undo that then to take weight away from it you hold down alt if you have the default uh, keyboard modifiers um, nothing adds alt left click and drag removes so the red will turn blue and as i do this it eventually will turn gray depending on uh, on what value you set here this is the radius of how big your thing is and the uh, then there's also a value that you can set under sensitivity here how much or how little you want to apply i don't want to do this either so i'm going to go control z i want to go and hold down control and left click and drag and when i do that the the um you're smoothing this value out so uh, control will go and uh, will just smooth whatever is there so it goes and uh, makes everything a little bit less you know a little bit less harsh if you have uh, something that goes from gray directly to red you can go and smooth that out and uh, and fix that that way control z to undo that so if you go and look underneath the shoe or look at the portion of the shoe that has issues you can try a combination of all these things to fix that so i'm going to go and, and just smooth this out with the this is with the metastasal selected so control and i'll go and uh, smooth this out a little bit or i can also try alt and therefore just make sure this there's no influence here at all you can also go and make that stronger and that is the job so it looks like removing didn't help 
So let's go control Z that and go and control, and, uh, control that, control and smooth. And now you'll see that the geometry will be flattened out a little bit. It's not going to be a perfect job, but essentially that is how you fix your shoes. And the process, if you start again from scratch, will be almost the same. It's just uh, that your weight maps might be better or worse than what auto um, what auto fit will do. Luckily, it'll create this on both sides. And it really is trial and error to see what gets fixed. So sometimes I've had an issue here on my, on my particular shoes that the sides come apart here. And when that happens, you know, make sure you undo that. But that's essentially how you do it, John. And you can go through uh, each of these groups in the foot and see, or in, of the, not of the foot, of the actual boot, and see what influences what. And you can have a look at what needs the most fixing. And hopefully with a combination of these tools, so Alt, so Alt to take away, nothing, left click and, and drag to add, and Control to smooth, you can, you know, hopefully get your high heels uh, sorted. I hope this is helpful. And if it isn't, have a look at Alan's video and uh, see if you can import these shoes uh, exactly as an OBJ.